Hi everyone, Coach Sipo here. If you watch the intro of this course, then you definitely know that there are five different types of centers. And in that intro, I also briefly demonstrated how all these centers look like. On the first two lessons of this course, we already learned how to play positions with a closed and open center. Hence, today we are going to learn how to play positions with a static center. Without any more delays, let's dive into it. There are three key principles you need to keep in mind when you play positions with a static center. But before we discuss these three principles, let me quickly demonstrate how a static center position look like. We learned from the first session that a closed center is a position where the four central pawns are blocking each other and they cannot advance. As you can see that these four central pawns cannot advance. They are all blocking each other. And we also learned from the second session that an open center is a position where all the four central pawns are not here. So these two files are open. They don't have pawns. So we know a position with a closed center. We know the position with an open center. Well, a static center is something between a closed and an open center. We get um, a static center from openings like the Italian game or the Italian opening or the Rai Lopez. After these first few moves, okay, it doesn't matter where the bigger pieces go. But if we focus on the pawns, you will notice that the two pawns are blocking each other like in the closed center but these two pawns are not blocking each other they could still advance and there is a potential that they might be exchanged for example maybe if this one goes here this one goes here take take these two pawns will remain here and these two pawns might be exchanged so in short a static center is a position where only two pawns are blocking each other they could be on this file or they could be on this file. Two pawns are blocking each other and uh, the remaining two pawns are not present or they are present, but they are not blocking each other. They could still advance. We can also get um, a static center position from the London opening. For example, after d4, d5, bishop, uh, f4, it doesn't matter what... Um, Black plays, let's say black plays, uh, knight f6, e3. The point is that the two pawns are blocking each other and the remaining pawns are not blocking each other. That's a static center position. Now, the follow-up question might be, how do we play positions with a static center? Well, as I mentioned before, there are three key principles you need to keep in mind when you play positions with a static center. Okay, let's use the queen's pawn opening as an example. For example, after pawn d4, d5, this is a static center position. As we can see that these two central pawns are blocking each other, whereas the two remaining central pawns are not blocking each other. They could still advance. So, there are three key principles you need to keep in mind when you have a static center. By the way, these three principles are not in any particular order. Meaning you shouldn't say, I should always start with this principle, then follow with this principle. You can follow any of these three principles. The plan is to achieve all of them. Principle number one, you need to open at least one file. For example, you can push um, the C pawn to C4 or the pawn to E4. The idea is that you need to open at least one file for your rooks because in future your rooks will need an open file. So in the queen's gambit opening, white can already see that this is a static center. So white usually follows with c4. This move is opening a file in advance for the, for the a1 rook. Now, okay, maybe black will play something like this. Then white follows with this.
okay it doesn't matter how the game continues but principle number one you need to open one of the files next to the pawn it could be by pushing the c pawn and attacking that pawn or by pushing the e pawn depending on the position you are playing it's very difficult in many in many positions to push e4 e4 pawn so if it's difficult or it's almost impossible to push it then push the c4 pawn to open a file for your rooks that's how you play it black will also do the same thing black in most cases will play the knight there to d7 and black will fight for c5 because black also understands that he or she also need to open a file in advance for his or her rook or maybe black will play the pawn on c6 the semi-slav opening play the knight there finish development castle and then later on black will play e5 you see you always open one of these fights next to these central pawns so black will push e5 pawn or black will push c5 pawn depending on what is happening on a given position so number one you open a file in advance the second key principle is to place after finishing uh i think it is black's turn so let's say in this position black uh decides to castle or, or maybe play knight there of course white will continue with his development then black will castle as you can see now you bring the rook on a an open file or on a file that has a potential to be opened that's principle number two principle number one you open a file principle number two you want to place one of your rooks on the open files principle number three of course I, okay principle number two i told you black will try to do the same push the pawn to c5 or play the pawn to c6 and fight to push the pawn to e5 when it's safe to do so the third key principle is to occupy these important squares white will try to place his knight or knights on these squares these are advanced squares uh, and you need to place your minor pieces there especially knights because we all know knights are short ranged pieces so they need to be advanced there closer to the opponent's territory so knights should go there of course when it's convenient to do so and black's knights will also try to occupy these squares there e4 and also there c4 squares once you achieve those key principles it will depend now on the given position um where are the weaknesses for example if there are weaknesses um let's say okay let's say this happens okay let's say this happens um let's say black plays there and then you take take just making random moves then white is done with his opening now since white is controlling that open file with the rook later on white might try to go there maybe control that square even more once you achieve those three key principles you can attack now depending on where are the weaknesses for example white might go for a minority attack this is how you play positions with a static center